springtime and summer light academia films. So uh, last year I did two videos on light academia reading and light academia, it's this very like specific term uh, from what I can gather on it. It is uh, books and movies that feature characters um, uh, there's several components, but one is characters who love to learn, hence the academia term. It can be a school setting, but with light academia, it doesn't have to be. And it's also characters just really savoring those small delights and joys and, um, delighting in the natural world, like I said, and just having a vigorous enthusiasm for life, kind of a joie de vie attitude. And I thought it would be fun to recommend some films and TV shows to you, um, so maybe you could watch them in case you wanted to. And the first on the list is the 1980s miniseries of A Little Princess. This miniseries I think is vastly underrated. Right now it is on YouTube. So hopefully after I post this, it doesn't get taken down then. Um, but I just really love the leisurely pacing of this and I just find it incredibly delightful. And it is the most faithful to the original, uh, faithful to the plot of the original book. Um, and just, I don't know, there's something about it that I just find so enchanting. So I love this mini series. And the next one is The Well Digger's Daughter, uh, kind of a cluster actually. So I'll say The Well Digger's Daughter and then My Father's Glory and My Mother's Castle. So these are all um, movies, uh, written and directed, actually, my, my Father's Glory and My Mother's Castle, written and directed by Marcel Pagnol, and they are adapted from his memoir. And then The Well Digger's Daughter, I'm not sure about the origins of that one. My Father's Glory and My Mother's Castle are this duology of films that are about his summers spent in Provence. And they are just beautiful. Uh, these scenes of the boys really enjoying being out in the natural world. And getting to have so much freedom while they're safe out in the countryside. Their father is a school teacher and so he really relishes these summers where he has time off. Um, and also there's some really interesting dynamics because his father is a staunch atheist and things are, are really kind of dramatic for a bit when um, the mother's sister gets married to a Catholic and so they will debate back and forth about religion, have these very passionate spirited debates. Um, and also just it's incredibly poetic and poignant. There are some sad things in it as well. So have tissues ready and they are just so so beautifully, beautifully shot. I mean, French films, they make me want to watch like every French film out there after I see these. And then The Well Digger's Daughter is about Patricia, who is one of five daughters in this family and she becomes pregnant and she is not married and how her family deals with this. Uh, but it's dealt with with such a gentle hand. So this is not like a the Scarlet Letter kind of plot line. Um, it's just so life affirming and it's beautiful. And um, I just, his, his, his movies are so moving. Um, and there are a, a several more that I've even seen the library has them available. So I would love to watch, um, uh, I think it's Menon of the Spring. And yeah, I would love to, to watch a lot more by him. Um, and the next one is uh, Mary and the Witch's Flower. So this is based on a book that I would love to read by Mary Stewart. And I think it's called The Little, the little Broomstick. Um, and is, it is about a little girl that accidentally stumbles on a magic school and she's not supposed to be there. She's not supposed to know about it. And, um, it's just very, if you like Studio Ghibli, this really has like the same vibes of that. And, um, I love the magical world that she learns about, but also it's really fun. The scenes where she's staying in the countryside and it's this cozy house and, um, yeah, lots of scenes of her in the forest and other things, but then it gets very adventurous and twisty turny and things that you weren't expecting. So I love Mary and the Witch's Flower. And the next one, a Studio Ghibli, and I am so late to the party for Kiki's Delivery Service. I had not seen this until like a couple months ago and I was blown away by it. I watched it a second time um, and I never do that with feature length films. And I just love how safe this film feels. Um, it's very different from our world because she's 11. Kiki is 11 when she leaves home and her parents just hope that maybe at the end of the year they'll get a letter from her so they can know how she's doing. Um, 
but she is this very endearing little witch and she decides that she is going to start a delivery service. She's wondering kind of how she'll make her income and um, she comes in handy in this community where there are no other witches and she starts a delivery service and just the adventures that she goes on and um, it's she's a really inspiring character. I find her really lovely uh, to follow on her adventure and the music is really wonderful and yes just so calming and beautiful um and the animation it's just all of these scenes with wind blowing grass and it's just marvelous marvelous and the next one is Pollyanna the Haley Mills film so I will be honest I avoided this film for years because I was just certain it was going to be so saccharine and I would not like it and I'm still avoiding the book <laughs> um because I just I have not really loved um, a lot of children's literature from that time period, unfortunately, and it breaks my heart, uh, but I just know that. Um, so I just popped in the film, like, why don't I see what I think of it? And I loved this so much. Um, so I have no idea how similar to the book it is, and I'm very content that way. And uh, just seeing Pollyanna really charm this whole entire community, and I love all of the costumes and the sets. It felt uh, similar to Meet Me in St. Louis, for those of you that have seen that film. And it was just such a delight. Um, and uh, it was funny, it was entertaining, and there's really moving parts to it also. And it just, I didn't feel beat over the head with the morals in it, which is what the novels of that era, I feel like, can do, and, or the children's novels. And yeah, it, it was just really, really lovely. So. I highly recommend Pollyanna. And then I want to recommend Brave. Brave might seem like an unusual choice, but I feel like there is so much of the natural world in this and this Scottish setting and the soundtrack to this. And Merida, I find such a fabulous leading lady. And um, I think Brave is my favorite Pixar. So this, I just think of springtime and summer whenever I see this, even though Scotland, I know, can get very cold because of the season when it is set, it feels very springtime and summer. And I just love seeing Merida whip around on her horse, um, just loving getting to be an adventurous young woman. And I find it such a really um, captivating and engaging film. And the next one is the Kenneth Branagh Cinderella. This to me is so springtime and summer and um, is just filled with loveliness and, um, the spirit that Cinderella carries with her and shows through the resilience that she shows through all of these trials is what carries the film. And Lily James, I think, makes such a fabulous Cinderella character. And you just, you want, you're rooting for her. You want things to turn out well for her. I love how fairy tale-ish all of the, the sets and the costumes feel and all of the little details. I've seen this film probably close to 30 times now. Like I will never tire of it. And it's just as familiar to me as breathing at this point. Um, so I love that film. And the romance in it is just so sweet. I love the soundtrack. It's also lovely. Um, the next one, and this is uh, a documentary series. And I feel like a number of you who watch me, um, either you already love this, or you will love it when you do watch it. Um, and I'm forever grateful to Taylor, my friend from The Babbling Bee, who told me about this series. Um, so there are several documentaries and they are about um, historians who go to a farm or a castle from a certain time period and they will use the technology that only could have been used in that era, nothing, you know, from a future date. Uh, so there is uh, two, uh, Secrets of the Castle where they are reassembling a castle using only technology from that era. And then there is Tudor Monastery Farm, Victorian Farm, Edwardian Farm, and then I think it's called Wartime Farm. I've watched bits of Secrets of the Castle Tudor Monastery Farm and Victorian Farm, and I have not finished any of them. So I want to, um, my boys have loved watching them too, which I was really not expecting that. I thought they would be bored, but they are riveted. Um, so I would love to start with them again, maybe start at the earliest date one, which I think is Secrets of the Castle and watch through that and then just slowly watch, watch through all of them. But what I really love is kind of, you're getting to see the very specific details about what it was like to clean clothing, to cook food, to store food, um, to stay warm in the winter, to clean your house, 
um, and to clean your body, um, to go to the bathroom, all of these details uh, that you, you just take for granted how, you know, the conveniences that we have nowadays. And I find it fascinating. But then also there's things that we've lost, like more of a sense of community. And um, yes, just lots of uh, being out in the natural world, you know, just, <laughs> just by the nature of the situation, um, being in a farm, uh, or the castle, you know, is right by the forest. So I really, really love that series. And then the original All Creatures Great and Small TV series. I am just such a fan of this series. And there are so many seasons. So the boys and I have slowly uh, here and there, you know, we'll watch an episode and um, it's so splendid. And there's lots of traveling around in Yorkshire. Um, now there's definitely a variety of seasons because these are about someone's life, you know, they're about what they, uh, the all of the seasons that they worked through. Um, but uh, I find that just all of the, the new life and the animals really does make me think of springtime and summer. And yes, I just, I love these. There's humorous episodes. There are heartbreaking episodes. So if you're worried about it being too sad, I would just read an episode synopsis maybe beforehand, and then you can have a heads up on kind of what kind of episode it's going to be. Um, then the next one is another series that I love watching with the boys, and that is Lark Rise to Candleford. You are following two Victorian communities, Lark Rise, which is this little hamlet, and then Candleford, which is kind of a bigger in comparison little village. And what I love is that one of the main places you are in in Candleford is the post office. And I never knew that was, you know, a setting that I wanted in a show, but it is delightful. And there is some drama that happens from time to time with the, the mail delivery, but you're really just following the residents of this community and kind of dealing with the changing times, um, technology changing, particularly like farming and, um, garment making being changed by factories. Um, and uh, there's questions of ethics, of religion, um, lots of political questions, and characters with varying political views. And it's just so lovely because it tackles kind of those questions, uh, the, the bigger questions and the things of life, but with such a gentle hand and done in a charming Lark Rise to Candleford way. And then A Room with a View, and my personal favorite is the Helena Bonham Carter version. And this to me, just the glories of traveling to Italy in the summertime. And it is quirky and unusual. And actually, I do not really love this for the romance. I love it just for the charm of the trip and all of the interesting characters. And Helena Bonham Carter is just, oh, she's a baby in this film. And I love seeing her in it. And yeah, really, really love it. And then Miss Potter, Taylor from The Babbling Bee, reminded me of this film again. And what I love is that it has um, a few of the animals uh, after Beatrix draws them. It's about the life of Beatrix Potter, her career as an author specifically. You see a little bit of her childhood, but sometimes her drawings come alive and she has conversations with them. And it's very much about her, um, her career and her personal life and kind of the household that she grew up in and some of the kind of stifling conditions that she was raised in, but it's so beautifully done. I think Renee Zellweger makes just a splendid Beatrix Potter. I don't know how, how Brits feel about it, how they feel about her accent, but um, I really enjoy this film. And the next one is Anne of Green Gables with Megan Fellows, specifically the first film. The next film, uh, I think I'll do a like fall and wintertime one. I think that has much more fall wintertime vibes, but this one, because of all of the, um, walks that Anne takes out in the, you know, green fields and picking flowers it just feels very springtime and summertime to me. And just Prince Edward Island. I mean, it's such a uh, bucket list location for so many people and so many Anne fans to visit. And it just fills my cup. My cup runneth over when I, um, when I watch this movie. And then Wives and Daughters. This mini series just does have a lot of scenes of characters being outside, but just the something about the like light and fresh feel to the plot just screams spring and summertime to me. It is my May tradition now to reread Wives and Daughters, and I always follow that up by watching this. So now it's just become synonymous with springtime into summertime, and um, it's just splendid. So I love there's lots of um, 
drama, drama, drama that happens in it. And I just find it splendid and I never ever tire of it. And in case you are new to my channel um, and you did not know yet about my obsession with the Victorian novel Wives and Daughters, it actually is unfortunately unfinished. Uh, Gaskell died before she finished. It would have been like 10 to 15 more pages. It was not long. And I, I always feel satisfied. I know some people disagree with me, uh, but then I think if you're feeling at all unsatisfied, the miniseries gives it a very, very sweet ending, and I really like it. And then last on the list, now this one breaks my heart a little bit, and I hope things will change. So Ronya the Robber's Daughter um, is on, this was on Amazon Prime, Studio Ghibli, and Amazon Prime paired up to make this marvelous, splendid, just sublime series of Ronya the Robber's Daughter. The animation is astounding. However, they partnered up to do it, but it's currently unavailable on Amazon Prime. And then I even looked on um, like where you can, where you can stream all the Studio Ghibli films would be uh, HBO Max and it's not available on HBO Max. So currently it is unavailable anywhere. But this has happened from time to time with different Amazon things. I just find it very odd if it was made specifically by Amazon Prime partnered with Studio Ghibli that it would be unavailable at certain times. I'm really thoroughly, thoroughly hoping that things change and it does come back. And um, I will report to you otherwise if it does come back. And uh, yes, so. I read the book um, last middle grade March and I really enjoyed it. And um, it's just, I think this TV series has done it justice and the music is so beautiful. And I love, uh, there's really lovely narration that happens with each episode and just getting to see Ronya be this wild girl <laughs> in the woods, getting to have adventures. It's soothing to my soul. Uh, so those are the springtime and summer light academia films. I hope that you enjoyed this list and maybe found something that you would be interested in watching. And um, yes, as always, thank you for watching and I will be back with another video soon. Bye.